All right, top of the agenda, the tribunal appearance of Tom Stewart brings to a close an episode that roared to life at the MCG on Saturday afternoon. I understood that I'd made a wrong decision and it still sits in my gut and still makes me feel quite ill. He's in a bad way, Gary. He's in a really bad way down pressed here. He's hardly moved. He's in a world of hurt, Tom Stewart. Yeah. That's as clear cut as we've seen for a while. It's a real average act from a player that you'd least expect it to come from. When I spoke to him post game, he said, I've just made a horrible error and I feel terrible about it. He said, I ran past the ball and I chose to bump. I didn't mean to do it, but gee, it was terrible execution and I'm going to pay the price for it. The ball is so far gone from Dion Presti's yeah. hands that it, it's hard to find a defence anywhere. It, it was an ordinary moment. He's still pretty rocked by the incident. You could see how um, gutted he was, you know, at the action that was taken. We'll see how today plays out, obviously. And then from there, we'll work out a plan to get him in the best space for when he is allowed to come back. at the mercy of the tribunal now. It was a, a, a poor act and a poor decision by myself, but I have to live with that now, and that, I think that's the hardest thing for me. It was a pretty straightforward case tonight and a four-week suspension. Drew Jones has sat through it. Drew, how did it unfold? Good evening, gentlemen. Yeah, so I guess fairly straightforward in the fact that we knew that Tom Stewart was going to be suspended, so Geelong asked for three weeks, and the AFL went for four, and it was the AFL that got their way in the end with a four-game suspension handed out. So the AFL counsel, Nicholas Payne, was at pains to point out he ran past the ball, he chose to bump, and, well, I guess the consequences were clear, as you saw from the pictures there. So they noted in particular the bump was delivered at speed after Stewart had gone way past the ball. Prestia was unexpecting and vulnerable to being seriously injured. Concussion is a serious injury in itself, and the very reason the charge of rough conduct by bump was introduced. They also noted that AFL players are now more aware of concussion than ever before, and this is no longer considered an acceptable action amongst players. Now, two examples were noted tonight when discussing this case. We've got them here for you. So Patrick Dangerfield's bump on Jake Kelly last season. Now, this was exactly the same grading as far as severe, high and careless. This was also a three-game suspension. Now, it's talked about in the fact that uh, from a Geelong Council point of view, that was a more severe contact than what we saw from Stewart. This is the other one they cited, a bump from Sam Reid on Nat Fife. Now, Geelong say that was actually closer in terms of the impact of that contact than that that Dangerfield put on Jake Kelly. And from that point of view, they said, we know it's severe, we know he ran past the ball, we think it's a three-game suspension. They also pointed out that there was real and demonstrable... De I've got to get that word right. Demonstrable. <laughs> demonstrable. Demonstrable, that's it. Thank you, Jared. The, the way that he had remorse immediately afterwards uh, and as far as you could see there, um, the body language. Uh, and then on the night, they actually noted that Stewart did not want... Geelong's counsel to argue against the impact. So it was severe and he said, no, let's not argue or try and argue it down to high. I've got to accept what I've done and what the charge is. Now, noted by Jeff Gleeson this evening, he said, Stuart breached his duty of care by a significant margin and while the tribunal accepts he did not intend to bump Prestia high, he was careless and given what is known about the consequences of blows to the head, all reasonable steps must be taken to prevent avoidable blows Mr Stewart accepts this was avoidable head-high contact. Four-game ban. It starts on Saturday night against North Melbourne and includes games against Melbourne, Carlton and Port Adelaide. Drew, thank you. So this was Tom Stewart, Robbo, as he left the club tonight. As I said from the start, I accept the tribunal's decision. Um, I was left to their discretion and um, obviously disappointed in my actions and um, I had to own that as a man and... Uh, still, my, my immediate response was Dion's wellness and, and that of his family that had to vi have had to experience this. So, um, as as disappointed and disheartened as I am right now, it's it's still not about me. It's still about Dion's well-being and and how he is. As I've said from the start, I had to own my actions. I understood that I did the wrong thing. Um, the grading system's there to adjudicate that, and they deemed it severe. Um, uh, ultimately, what I chose to do resulted in somebody getting knocked out. Um, that's not the way I play the game. Never has been. Uh, my actions resulted in a consequence that I didn't uh, want to happen, um, so I had to own that.
So the penalty robo lifts uh, the the concussion under the careless banner up from three weeks to four weeks in a steady progression that I can imagine continues to grow over time. Are you happy with with four weeks? I thought it would. My flinch reaction was it would land at four weeks. Yeah, now that's what you thought. What's yep. your personal feeling? Yep, I think a steady progression on the. So if it's um, if it's intentional, we're we're in the five to six and growing. Mm. And if it's careless, we've moved from three to four. So I do. I, I think this. I think this further enshrines the, the penalties for players who inflict concussion mm. as we go along. It's a, it's a really interesting thing you say about the flinch moment. You look at it and you go, God, knocked out. As I've thought about and spoken to people and had my own thoughts about it in, in the two days since, we're, there's been a really big concentration on what a good bloke Tom Stewart is and that's part of it. And it's really interesting when, when, when people talk about, oh, Tom Stewart's body language after the event, he was really distressed. And I wrote down here... Yeah, but what about what about Dion Prestia's body yes, language, which was Tom's w point, which is uh, his family saw him getting carried off. Now, was it a dirty, mongrel, nasty, vicious act? No, but it was a reckless, nasty act. You could have done some damage to him. The, the, the point, the point I want to make, Jared, and, and, and this is just a discussion point. What happens in twenty years' time? Dion Prestia is suffering really badly in life and, he, and something happens to him. He dies. And they open him up and he's got really bad CTE. God. God, remember that hit. Now, I'm not trying to put that on Tom Stewart. I'm putting it on the game. Yeah, there's incident and consequence, yeah. which is totally separate so, to the yeah, individual so and the, character. So in between's the game. So is the game doing enough or has it done enough by saying four weeks? Is that a big enough... Penalty slash deterrent? <laughs> to say, hey, everyone, yeah. stop this. Yeah. Stop this because we don't know what's going to happen to this man yep. in the future. So I think I would answer that partly with the game did more this time than it did last time. So 18 months ago it settled at three weeks and now it has lifted that to four weeks. I think the natural progression in this is to move from careless to intentional, which we spoke about and, last and, time. And throw out careless. There should be <sighs> the, the, the intentional bump... So it's never been ruled this way under this regime. Mm. It's time to stop that mm. and actually assess intentional bumps that can have no other outcome other than serious injury and put them in the intentional basket, which allows you to provide greater penalty yeah. as we go. You're in the five to six category as a starting point. Well, the AFL's going to So is the game that. doing enough? That's the next... Yeah. I think that's the next progression between mm. seasons is to change that which has been rigid and consistent. I, I'll give them... It's been consistent. I think it's been consistently wrong for eight mm. years. And it's time to adjust that to move with the, the overall philosophy that they, they clearly are aiming for. Yeah, I agree. I don't want to go over, over spilt milk. We discussed it last night. But how about, how about the AFL and the, and the, and the MRO? Not, not the person, but the, the system. How about you stop insulting football by calling that careless? OK, stop with... You're insulting everyone. That wasn't careless. You know, he, he said he, he cared for... He cared for Dion after the event. I was really worried, and I'm sure you were. But in that, in that moment, you did not care. You didn't, because you went past the ball and you didn't show a duty of care. Yep. So don't give us he was, he was careless when he actually... Didn't show any care in the moment. I so let's strike that word. Yeah, it's really and stop easy. insulting us. It's really easy to move that to intentional once you move past the ball in such a manner. And I think that would be. Um, I think it's actually a. It's long overdue and it's essential in in its application next year. <laughs>